Okay, now let's talk about what we call diluted earnings per share. Now this is diluted because it's a complex capital structure. Remember over here we had basic, basic said assume there's nothing potentially diluted. Here in a, in a complex capital structure it's anyone who quote unquote could convert, we assume they do so. It doesn't mean they actually did, but it says anyone who could convert and it's economically advantageous. What does economically advantageous mean? It means that it is dilutive and the word dilutive is very important. Dilutive means that everyone's earnings per share goes down. If you gave money and earnings per share went up, that's anti-dilutive. We don't assume you're a moron unless you really are, right? So in other words, if the option, let's say we had stock options. Let's say the option price was $30 a share and the market price was $20 a share. Well, wait a sec. Would you exercise that option? No, why not? Because you're going to give me more and get less. That's anti-dilutive. You'd be give, we, you wouldn't exercise the option. You just go out on the open market and buy them for 20 bucks a share, right? So we don't assume you're a moron unless you really do exercise it. But assuming you don't, could you exercise? Yeah. Is it dilutive? No. Then don't include it. But is it, di let's say, let's change the numbers. Let's say the market price is 40. If you convert, everyone gets $10 less, right? In this case, because if you were to exercise this option, you would give me 30, I'd have to give you 40, that means I have $10 less for everybody else, that dilutes how much they get. So when we talk about these things that are convertible, we're only gonna include them if they are what? If they are dilutive, which means earnings per share should start big and get less and less and less. If earnings per share would get bigger if you converted, then we don't, even though you could convert, it's not economically advantageous, we assume you're not, we don't include it. So. What I want to do is I come across and do this calculation. Let me clean this up just a little bit, moving this over. Okay, so we started out here, we said net income minus preferred, boom, divided by weighted average number of shares outstanding. We define weighted average, says what? Dividends and splits retroactive, go through and take the partial year and so on. Now, we're going to take this number and bring it to here. We're going to take this and bring it to here and make some more adjustments. We're going to adjust for number two, number three, number two, number three. Okay, now what do two and three mean? Number two is called the if converted method. So two, I'm going to put over here, two if converted method. Now what does the if converted method mean? What kind of things are convertible? Uh, we could have what? Convertible bonds, convertible preferred stock. So this is going to be for convertible bonds and preferred stock. So what it says is if they converted, what would happen? If you converted the bond, what would I not have to pay you? Interest expense. If you converted the preferred, what would I not have to pay you? Preferred dividends. What would you convert into? Common stock. So the if converted method says, okay, can you convert? Yes. Is it economically advantageous, meaning it's diluted to everybody else? Yes. Then we go, okay, let's assume you did it, we'll add the numbers in. So what this says is if converted method says, okay, if you converted, what would happen? That's where we're going to go back and add back certain amounts. So if you converted here, what would I add back? Well, here's the dividends, right? If you converted, I wouldn't have to pay you the preferred dividends. And I'm going to add the preferred dividends in. Now, dividends come out of after-tax dollars, right? Therefore, it would be not net of tax. Just add them back. Or bond interest. So the bond interest would be the interest expense. The bond interest expense, that would be added in net of tax. Why? Because if you converted, I wouldn't have to pay you bond interest. That means I would have extra money, but that money would get taxed, so I would have that net of tax to give away. But the preferred dividend came out of after tax. If you convert, I got that extra 200 grand, I can just give it away. So that one's not net of tax. So under the if converted method, what are we looking at? We're looking at things like convertible bonds, convertible preferred stock. All right, so what it assumes is the securities are converted at the beginning of the period or when issued, if they're issued during the year. So assume it's at the beginning of the year or during the year if the securities were issued during the year. It also says we're going to eliminate things like the interest, net of tax. We're going to then add back the preferred dividends. Those are things we're going to do 
under this thing called the if converted method. So for preferred dividends, again, what do we do? We took them out here to get this. If you could convert and they were convertible and it was advantageous, then we take that and add back that preferred dividend, not net of tax. What would you add in the bottom? Well, they would tell us in the question how many shares the convertible preferred or converted into, plus the number of shares of common stock converted into. So we would add that back, plus the number of shares of common stock converted into. So that's going to be the number of shares converted into. So we're going to add that back because those are how many shares. So again, I got more money, mm -hmm, but I'm giving out more shares. We're assuming the net net is going to drop everyone's earnings per share. Otherwise, it's not diluted.